The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and e-book formats on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and sponsored by international award-winning author Mia Mohsen Zia of Missing. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at SoundCloudStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia molson if you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molsenzia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molsenzia has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molsenzia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast for merchandise, great gifts, and more. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles, and cool merchandise and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with an amazing legend who began playing guitar at 17 years old, accomplished at 18, and is local and well-known around Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's known for the national hit Just a Dream and the big smash hit Venus in Blue Jeans. We'll talk about that. He played in a lot of places like the Hollywood Bowl, the Lincoln Center. He is also big in the Philippines, Australia, and most recently in Thailand. He's been invited by Alan Free to star in Go Johnny Go, and he also appeared in Teenage Millionaire. We'll We'll talk about that. And, of course, he also got some recent re- releases like Everybody Needs Love, It's All For You, and Farewell to the Bayou, and Back Where It All Began. But we're going to be talking about his book as well, Just a Dream. And it's not just a dream. It's an autobiography of an amazing legend, and he's lived through it. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios, somewhere from the bayou or could be somewhere else. And it's just a dream and it's reality. Ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented singer-songwriter, Jimmy Clinton. Jimmy, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Well, I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> I've never had an introduction like that before. Thank you, Mike. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and on your program. Well, it's a great to have on board as well, too. And, I mean, you got an amazing start playing guitar at 17. You became accomplished at 18, and uh, you got local around Baton Rouge, but then you also uh, hit it big with uh, Just a Dream as your national hit, and you're also known for your smash hit, Venus and Blue Jeans. You play at the Hollywood Bowl, Lincoln Center, and all over the United States. You're also big in the Philippines, Australia, and you have a most recent following in Thailand. 
You got invited by Alan Freed to star in Go Johnny Go. You also appeared in Teenage Millionaire. You also got some recent releases, but we're here to talk about your book, Just a Dream, and you've lived it. It's an autobiography. It's available as well, too. And before getting to all that, Jimmy, um, tell us how you first got started. Well, I, I grew up down in the bayou country of uh, Louisiana, Louisiana. My mother was one of those <clears throat> real, uh, for for true uh, Cajun Cajun women, Creole Cajun lady. Spoke French until she was about nine years of age, and I was born down there in uh, in Golden Meadow, Louisiana. I was actually. Uh, from cut off Louisiana, but cut off did not have, did not have a hospital. So I was I was born in Golden Meadow, and I stayed down there for uh, about six months. And we we moved to to Birmingham when my dad had a job with a oil 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 fuel company. Then we we moved uh, not too long by the time I was well, I guess six years old, seven. To to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and that's where I actually grew up and. Uh, yeah, that's uh, went to high school there. I went to LSU for for a season, and uh, I started playing music uh, around Baton Rouge uh, with a, a little band. And uh, I I guess one day I could put it this way: a young man named Dick Holler, uh, who was a couple of years older than me, he he had heard that I was such a, a great guitar player because I, I had become very, very good by the time I was uh, 18. Mm-hmm. And he said, he said, look, he said, I've got a little lounge group. He said, but the, the music is changing and we want to get away from the, the little lounge group sound and want to do a, a rhythm and blues rock and roll uh, swamp pop sound. And he said, but got to have a guitar in there. And so he convinced me that he had all the engagements and you could go into a place that served alcohol when you were 18 hmm. in Louisiana back then. And so he showed me, you know, we have all these engagements and I would get paid. And I started off getting paid like $10 a night. But, you know, $10 in 1957, 1958, $10 went a long way. Mm-hmm. So I would play a few engagements with him. And then after about a month, I guess, uh, everything changed because I noticed that Dick was doing all the singing. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, by the end of the engagement, he was getting a little hoarse, it seemed to me. Oh, wow. And I, I had worked with this big band for just a, a couple of engagements. And one night playing with this big band before I went with Dick... I overheard this conversation, and I just picked up the last part of it. And what I heard, what I heard was, well, I pay him five dollars a night more because he sings. Huh. And for whatever reason, I caught on to that. Now I wasn't into the singing; I wanted to just be a guitar player. Mm-hmm. But, but I, I thought about that, and it, it was in the back of my mind. And I thought, you know, Dick, Dick is singing all the songs. So I went to him, and I said, Dick, I said, look. I was with this other band, and this guy did some singing, but they paid him $5 a night more. And I said, you, you're going to wear yourself out if you do all the singing every every gig we have, and I'd be glad to do some of the singing, you know, for that $5 a night more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he, he looked at me, and he said, well, he thought about it. He said, we'll, we'll just give it a try. So I'll never forget a record came out on the specialty label by one of the Neville brothers from down there in, in New Orleans mm-hmm. by Arthur Neville. And this, the song was Ooh Wee Baby. Ooh Wee Baby. Ooh Wee. <laughs> you remember that? I remember, yeah, the Neville brothers. Oh my God, they're yeah. amazing. Yes. So I, start, <laughs> I started singing that song and I thought, you know, I'm going to memorize this. So I went to Dick on the next gig. And I said, okay, I got the song, and you can give me a try and see how it goes. So lo and behold, I went up to the microphone, and uh, I told everybody, okay, I'm going to do this song. And I started, I taught the band. So we began doing that song with me singing the the, the song, Ooh Wee Baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next thing I know, it was, it was a big crowd there, a couple of hundred uh, in this uh, club. And I started not- noticing they all started gravitating up toward the front of the bandstand. Wow. And they're all all looking up at me with big eyes. (laughs) 
And I'm doing a song, and I'll never forget out of the clear, but this to this day, I remember this. I looked down, and I could and I, I could read the lips of this guy, and the girls liked me too, but this guy, he looked over at his buddy, and I, looked, I, could, lip, I could read his lips, and he said, wow, he said, that kid can sing. And I thought, whoa. So sure enough, I told Dick, he, he saw the reaction. The next thing you know, I started doing more and more songs. I started getting five dollars a night more. Wow. And our, 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 we, we renamed our group called the Rockets. And I became the main singer and, and really the star of the band is what it amounts to of the Rockets. And so that's how I got us started. We became the most well-known white rhythm and blues, uh, the rock and roll group in all of the uh, the Gulf Coast down there. Amazing. But but what started making uh, the big change for us, a girl came over to us at our table, and she said to me and to Dick, she said, I, I dated this musician, and he said that there's a recording studio down in New Orleans. Hmm. And he said, and for $25... You can have a whole hour, and you can record the band so y'all can hear what you sounded like. Mm. Well, we thought that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, we end up going down there. But Dick did all the recording with his songs. Mm -hmm. They were all original. So all of a sudden, the engineer stops. Dick, Dick Holler, Dick says, okay, that's it. We'll, we'll, we'll hear what our our band sounds like. And the engineer said, well, you've got six more minutes that you paid for. You don't have anything. You don't have anything else. And Dick said, well, I, I don't have anything. And he looked over at me and said, Jimmy, you got anything? Well, it just so happened out of the clear blue. I had never written a song before in my life. I had no clue about how you go about writing a song. But I was I was uh, having a bad uh, relationship with my girlfriend we were arguing all the time mm -hmm. and out of the clear blue in the in the living room of my house i ended up writing a song huh it, it's kind of like what we call the louisiana uh five chord change uh swamp pop song kind of and i'll get into that and so i wrote this song and somehow or another i remembered the song so I, I I told the band i said y'all just kind of follow me and so we recorded that song Mm -hmm. And it was called I Trusted You. So we all packed up. We go back home. And about five or seven days later, I get a phone call at my house. Mm -hmm. And this guy gets on the phone. He said, uh, Jimmy, he said, uh, my name is Johnny Vincent. He said, I own a record company called Ace Records. Mm -hmm. And he said, I was just in the studio here in New Orleans uh, getting ready to do a recording suit, uh, uh, studio uh engagement here with uh, Huey Smith, Huey Piano Smith, uh, Huey and, the, and the, the Clowns. And I knew who they were. They had a big hit, Rock and Pneumonia, the Boogie Woogie Flu. They had this big hit already down there in Louisiana. And I couldn't believe that that, that studio is where these big time artists recorded. Wow. So he said, well, he said, I came in here and he said, I overheard this playback of a song that you recorded down here. And he said, I really, I, I liked I liked the song. I liked, liked the way you did it. And he said, I'd like to talk to you about that. Mm. I, I still didn't quite get it. And he said, would you please, could, could you come to drive here to New Orleans and meet with me? And so I ended up going to New Orleans, and we talked for a few minutes. And the next, the next thing I know, it hit me. He said, I'd like to sign you and, and have you record that song. But I want you to record it with all of these New Orleans musicians. Wow. They were the ones that backed up Fats Domino, Lloyd Price, Little Richard, all of the uh, the, the big acts from down south. He said, I'd like to, I'd like to do that song with, the, with the, the, the New Orleans band. He said, I'd like to put it out on my label. Nice. And, and he said, but I don't want the Rockets. I want just Jimmy Clanton. Hmm. I said, well, I don't want to leave the band. He said, you won't have to. So I signed that contract, and I went back to, 
to Baton Rouge, told the guys what was going on. I said, we, you know, I said this would help us get getting get gigs. I mean, nobody in Baton Rouge had ever made a record. I said, we we will really be <laughs> we'll be big stars here, you know. <laughs> so sure enough, they put out the record, and the Baton Rouge station played it, and so we became very very popular because now we're on the radio. Wow. And and so that was fantastic. But where what really started my career, and then you can take over here, <laughs> is that about about three months later, Johnny Vincent calls me. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Hold on. Absolutely, yeah, I'll take one too as well. So <laughs> Okay. So I get a call from him about three months later. He said, You know what? He said, It's time to do a new session. And then he said, have you written any new songs? I went, what? <laughs> I, I don't write songs. I just play guitar. He <laughs> said, well, you, you, gotta, you, gotta, you need to start writing songs, so we got to do a new re- a recording session. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Well, the next thing you know, not realizing that I became a songwriter, songwriting machine. I mean, I started knocking out songs left and right. It was unbelievable. They were just coming to me. So I go into the studio about three months later, and we do a whole bunch of songs. And then right at the end, I said, okay, I got this one last song. It's a real slow song. And so I I taught it to him, and we started playing it, and we ended up recording it. And I'll never forget the saxophone player looked over at me after we had finished, and and it it was a take. He looked at me, and he said, that is a hit. Wow. Well, it turned out it turned out to be just a dream. Well, the next thing I know, Johnny Vincent calls me in April of 1958. He said, pack a little suitcase. He said, I'm sending you to Philadelphia. I've, I've been able to acquire for you an appearance on this new show called Dick Clark and American Bandstand. Wow. I didn't know that much. I didn't know that much about the show because I didn't watch television in, in those days. Uh, and so. Sure enough, I, I fly to Philadelphia. That was like going to Mars for me. I'd never been on an airplane, never been outside of the, the Gulf Coast. So I fly to Philadelphia, and uh, they pick me up, take me to the studio. And I just, I, I guess I, re, I was able to fit right in on how you lip sync to a song, you know. Mm. So I got up there, and, and I did my song. And uh, all the kids, especially the girls, really seemed to like me. <laughs> and so I ended up going back home to Baton Rouge. And lo and behold, I get a phone call from Johnny Vincent. The day after I did that appearance on American Bandstand, Ace Records got orders for over 100,000 copies of Just a Dream. Wow. Within 10 days, the major booking agency of America was calling. They wanted me. Alan Freed wanted me. Every DJ in America, all the dance, all the dance party shows, and everybody wanted me or to be a, to be on their show. It was unbelievable overnight. So I ended up going to New York. I signed that contract immediately. I was with Alan Freed. I was with Dick Clark. I was with all the major known DJs in America, and that's when we started doing uh, road shows with the Greyhound bus. And I'm barnstorming all. over over the United States, all over Canada, from one end to the other. I mean, it was like unbelievable overnight. That's what happened. Oh, my gosh. That was something. And, of course, we'll talk a bit more about Just the Dream. Also, your smash hit, Venus in Blue Jeans. And um, you also um, appeared in Teenage Millionaire and more. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. 
Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Eve Eleven adores by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms in over 100 countries. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. For great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books, merchandise, and more. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewagnershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the amazing, legendary Jimmy Clinton here on the Mike Wagner Show. Began playing guitar at 17, accomplished at 18. He was known for the national hit Just a Dream, and we'll be talking about a smash hit, Venus in Blue Jeans and more, and some of his travels. He was also invited. He appeared on Teenage Millionaire, his recent releases. We'll be talking about his book, Just a Dream. And speaking of Just a Dream, what was that precise moment that simply influenced you into writing Just a Dream? Well, ironically, I, I was going with the same girlfriend that I wrote uh, that first song I trusted you with. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we, even though I thought we were in love, we still always were fighting. And I ended up in the, bed, in the uh, living room of my house. I ended up uh, writing Just a Dream in 20 minutes. Wow. And, yeah. And so ironically, so when I, when, when that's, when Just a Dream came out, it was just amazing how it nationally became such a big hit all over the United States. It became well known actually uh, throughout uh, uh, England, throughout uh, all of uh, Australia, uh, even in Thailand and in Italy. And every nation pretty much in the world uh, became uh, affiliated with uh, knowing that song, and uh, that song just really, really, really uh, catapulted me up to uh, a, a place to where my name was known with that song uh, in many places of the world. Wow, that was amazing too! And it's not was just a dream. You also had another sleepless night and go, Jimmy, go, and um, tell us more about those songs. What inspired you to write them? Well, another sleepless night, uh, I was backstage doing the show, and a, this young man came over, and he said, Jimmy, I love Just a Dream. And he said, I even wrote a song, he said, for for you, because it would it would really fit you. And I was going, oh, yeah, you know, everybody has a song for me now. And he really just uh, pushed and pushed and pushed, and it turned out to be a, a little ra- a, a piano over the side of the the studio there, and he went over and said, let me just play a little bit for you, and I I was trying to be a nice guy about it, but lo and behold, he started playing a little bit, and I went, oh my God, and I fell in love with the song, and the song was Another Sleepless Night, and that young man that was pushing me about it, who wrote it, was Neil Sedaka. Oh my gosh, he's one of my favorites. I love Neil Sedaka. He's great. (laughs) Yep, yep. He wrote that. Wow. That was something. And of course, he also had Go Jimmy Go, which later turned into a movie on Go Johnny Go. We're going to buy by Alan Freed. And uh, tell us more about that. Well, I was just backstage uh, with Alan. I I had become a very very good friend of his. Uh, he and I were very close friends, and I was I did all of his shows throughout New York, and he just came by uh, backstage uh, one night and just very nonchalant said to, to, said to me, he said, I'm getting ready to go out to Hollywood to film, I don't remember if he said my last rock and roll movie, but it was something of that effect, and he said, uh, I, I've, I've named it. Uh, Johnny Melody, and he said, uh, I'd like for you to play the lead. Oh. And I looked, and he had a script, and it was called Johnny Melody. However, <laughs> by the time I agreed to do it, and we went to California, Chuck Berry came out with Johnny Be Good, and of course, one of the lines in that big, big hit was "Go Johnny Go." Mm-hmm. So Alan Freed, Alan Freed wanted to catch on to that phrase of "Go Johnny Go" with Chuck Berry, and Chuck Berry was in the movie, so he changed the 
he changed the, the name of the movie from Johnny Melody to Go Johnny Go. And so that that's how I ended up going out to California and filming uh, that movie, Go Johnny Go. Incidentally, uh, my my script on the front of it, it says Johnny Melody. My script is in Cleveland, Ohio, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, my goodness. I have to go there and check it out. I love it. It is yes. there, yeah. <laughs> wow. And he also appeared in Teenage Millionaire as well. You can uh, tell us more about that. And I'm thinking about it. I think you have been a great Hollywood actor. Well, Teenage Millionaire was just uh, the same type of Go Johnny Go movie, and uh, I had uh, run into a fellow that was talking to a man, and it uh, turned out that he was getting ready. He wanted to produce a rock and roll movie out in California, and of course, when when they found out who I was and that I had, st- I was a big star at the time already, and already having made a, 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 a big star movie, so he was so so enticed. He wanted me to play the lead in that, so I ended up doing that and we went out to California, and uh, we filmed that movie, and uh, so that's you know my career was was pretty pretty awesome during those years. I'd, I'd like to bring this to the to a close with you, Mike, by just giving this story, and then we'll we'll call it a day, okay? Okay, that's fine. All right, and here's the culmination uh, of my interview with you today. Okay. By by August of 1980, uh, the music had so changed. Beatlemania, the the, the English invasion. Then it went to heavy metal. Uh, uh, all of those uh, ACDC, all of, all of these heavy metal groups, everything had changed with the music. And so our music was really the 50s doo-wop, the easy kind of song we did was kind of a passe. passe. And so things had changed. And ironically, I was I was hard-pressed to even find engagements oh. by, by uh, 1978 to 1980. And uh, things were looking very, very distraught. And uh, I, uh, I had had a bad, bad situation happen to me because of religion when I was a child. Oh. And I, I remember by the time I turned 40, I used to have these thoughts, you know, people die at 40. Mm-hmm. And, and don't, and you know, you, you, you're probably going to be lost in wherever the darkest place is because of your religious affiliation and, and you didn't do the right steps and all of this kind of thing. And so I never forgot that. And so things were getting worse for me with music. Uh, uh, I was getting uh, fired from engagements because of weird things. And so I, I said all that, that to say this. The God of this universe set me up through a lot of pitfalls to get me to the place where I, in August of 1980, I had just driven to an engagement, and I had a pretty little girl who was in my show, but she decided she wanted to go with another band, so she left my group. Mm -hmm. Well, the 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 person that I was booked I was booked for, he he wanted to know where that girl was in the group. And I said, well, she left because she wanted to go on her own with somebody else. Well, he fired me because he got out of the contract. He said, this is not the group that I hired. Oh, no. This is not the the same personnel. And he was correct. So I got fired. Oh, my. And I got, by the time I got back home, I was so, I'm telling you, I was so, so down, so heartbroken. And I mean, music, nothing was working. And I was just, I didn't know where. I was going to end up. And uh, one night in August of 1980, uh, this show came on television. I had never heard of it before. And I I just was sitting down to watch it. It was about 1130 at night. And all of a sudden, this man started talking about what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that he took your sins that he shed his blood for your sin so that God would see you as right standing in his sight through the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I grabbed that. I heard what that man said. And I thought, yeah, but all that religious stuff I went through, they all said I was going to, you know, go into hell. <clears throat> well, 
the more I listen to what this man said about what Jesus did, it's what it just it just revolutionized my thinking. And so by twelve o'clock that night I looked up and I said, If what this man says is true, then I ask you to forgive me my sins and I ask you to come into my heart, Jesus. I ask you to, to make me your son. And at that moment, physically as well as spiritually, the God of this universe visited me personally. It's all the whole story of how that happened to this very day is in my book, my autobiography. And what it says is just a dream. The story of Jimmy Clanton and right at the bottom it says from singer, from teenage singer to servant of God. Because from that night in 1980, beginning the next morning, I'll never forget. I opened my eye. I didn't say anything. And I, I thought this thought. I said, did all of that happen last night? Did you come to me and take over my body and speak through my mouth? And it, it was all incredible. And, and I thought, I just had that thought. And then I heard, yes, <clears throat> the God of this universe spoke to me verbally. And he began to speak to me all that week. And as the months went by, as the years went by, the Spirit of God began to speak to me and take me on a supernatural trip throughout all of America, every state in the Union. I, I, w I was preaching, praying, prophesying. I mean, I was going all over. Wow. But then in 1994, a prophetess, I was at a church where she was at. She said, uh, Mr. Jimmy, she said, I sense that God is getting ready to take you back 180 degrees back into the music business because he has no one backstage to represent him. And you have been prepared for such a time as this. And do you know, within a week, on an un I had an unlisted phone number. I got a phone call on my own unlisted number phone, and this promoter I don't how got I don't know supernaturally he got my number. He said I've been looking for you for seventeen years. Seventeen, wow! <laughs> and he said people have been asking for you, and I said, well, I'm not going to go back to the bars. He said, no, no, no. These are beautiful concerts. Sit down in beautiful places. So I call and never forget John Osteen from Lakewood Church. He was my pastor. That's uh, Joel Osteen's uh, dad. And John Osteen said, Jimmy, he said, that's God. You'll be able to minister to people that wouldn't even cross the threshold of the church. So I accepted that engagement. And as soon as I showed up at that engagement, I'm thinking all of my fellow peers, they're, they're, all, they're not going to want to be around me because, you know, I'm so religious. It was just the opposite. They all wanted to be around me. They all wanted to talk with me. They all wanted me to pray with them. And so that started an incredible journey so that in, uh, in uh, 1994, I began to accept engagements because everywhere I went, God had somebody specifically there for me to minister to. It happened in, in, in uh, Thailand, a little Buddhist girl. I led her to the Lord Jesus Christ. It happened in Italy. It, it happens everywhere I've ever gone since 1994. God's always had at least one specific person. And all of these supernatural stories are in my autobiography that is now out. It took 10 years to finally put it together. My executive associate, Sandy Week, uh, compiled it. Uh, and she edited it, and she took it all down, and we put it together, and is now available for our purchase. Uh, you can get my the story of Jimmy Clanton all the way up throughout to the modern day, and it's all supernatural, and you can get it at jimmyclanton.com. Okay, we will certainly do so. And uh, what else is coming up for Jimmy Clinton and more? We'll find out in just one minute. Listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all you need. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the amazing singer, songwriter, and author of the book, Just a Dream, Jimmy Clinton. After this timeout, the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. 
If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the amazing singer, songwriter, and also author of the book, Just a Dream, with Jimmy and Clinton here on the Mike Wagner Show. Jimmy, you had a great testimony, and I just loved your career. And, of course, you know, Venus and Blue Jeans is still ringing in my head. And um, I wasn't sure if we um, we talked about that bit, maybe just um, a quick thought. But other than that, uh, what else can we expect in 2022 and beyond, Jimmy? Well, I have um, I have some shows here and there. Uh, through every, people can always find out my show schedule at jimmyclinton.com. Is that right, Sandy? Jimmyclinton.com, which is a million dollar website, uh, of, and it, uh, it will be up to date on all of my engagements. I've got a rock and roll cruise I'm going to be headlining, uh, going out of Los Angeles, uh, in February 2023. Uh, that will be, uh, advertised at jimmyclinton.com. If you, if you're interested, in, if you're if you're interested in a, in a major major cruise, that would be the one out of Los out of uh, Long Beach, California, all the way down uh, the uh, Mexi- the Mexican Riviera, all the way down there. And then I'm doing a major major uh, paddle boat <laughs> tour, uh, paddle boat, <laughs> paddle boat, yes, uh, <laughs> ship. Uh, it, we're going. It's going out of Memphis, Tennessee, all the way down the Mississippi River to seven seven days. Uh, we will stop at all the major cities along the way. And all of that is available to find out about it, jimmyclinton.com. Other than that, my life is just kind of just, uh, you know, just, 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 I just, just laid back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say just a dream, but I guess that's my life too. So like many of us. <laughs> and who do you consider biggest influence in your career, Jimmy? I'm sorry? Who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Well, I guess when it comes to um, uh, influence and artists, that would have been Ray Charles from the, the first days of his uh, his uh, rhythm and blues sound. And uh, I've always liked uh, the blues, and so that that would be what I would consider to be the root of my influence when it came to music. Mm-hmm. And very amazing too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Well, first of all. Make sure you know who the Lord Jesus Christ is as your Savior. That's first and foremost. And when you do that, I I got this in my prayer time this morning, in fact. But this is for somebody. Allow, by the Spirit of God, allow Him, allow, allow yourself to bloom in the place where you are. And then the fruit of that bloom will come forth and your life will be laid out for you. That is terrific. I love it, Jimmy. And once again, we're with uh, Jimmy Clinton, author of the book, Just a Dream, singer, songwriter, best known for the hits, Just a Dream, Venus and Blue Jeans, and more on the Mike Wagner Show. Jimmy, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. Once again, tell us about your upcoming project, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people uh, check out check out your book and also check out your works. Well, as I said, you know, JimmyClinton.com, you can, you can get all my music there. 
I've got a compilation of all my hits, uh, everything on CD. I've got I've got pictures available, and of course the book is available at JimmyClanton.com, and it's also on Amazon, by the way. So all of my engagements are always posted. So everything about Jimmy Clinton can be uh, obtained and found out from JimmyClinton.com. So thank you very much, Mike. And will do as well. Once again, Jimmy, a very big thank you for your time. You've been totally amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish you all best. You've got a great future ahead of you, and God bless you. Thank you, my friend. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosin Zia of Missing. And powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms. And of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>